The boy began to notice the sounds inside the cave more, drops of water falling to the ground, chips of stone moving for some reason. He noticed small footsteps moving. When the boy heard the last one, he got into a defensive position and soon realized he was not alone. Since entering the cave, his heartbeat wanted to start accelerating again, but the boy tried to be calmer this time. He knew that the monsters outside the dungeon were not that dangerous, mainly being a threat only when they were in a pack and, preferably, in an open space. Bell was in a small room with a few columns scattered around it. The boy had the advantage. He was focused and looking for his opponents for his first adventure, when suddenly he noticed something and dodged out of pure reflex, but not enough to avoid a cut on his cheek. The boy's body began to lose control and the fear of death knocked on the door, but he began to remember the training he had with Zald, where the man made the boy go through something similar. He had to dodge several objects that were thrown at him during training, but this time he could really die. Bell used all his ingenuity to dodge the arrows that were fired at him. The boy used the columns to his advantage and tried to get closer to the places where the arrows were being shot. He managed to hit his first monster, a small goblin who was impressed by the little boy's speed. Since the beginning of training, he had always noticed that he had good speed, but it wasn't just him who noticed this, his trainers did too, and they invested a lot in Bell's speed. He started to get excited and ran at full speed, drawing his small sword against the monsters, but one of the monsters ended up surprising him. It was bigger than the others and was holding a large branch from an old tree. It hit the boy squarely, who hit his back against a column in the cave. At that moment, all the confidence he had until then simply disappeared. Bell remembered that he was just a newbie and that he shouldn't think so highly of himself. He hurriedly got up and started running once more, but the monsters didn't want to miss this opportunity and started shooting more arrows at the boy. Bell completely lost control of the situation. He rushed in and didn't analyze everything. Looking at the exit, he wondered if his aunt would come in to help him, but he imagined the look of disappointment on her face and once again clenched his fist and gritted his teeth. He entered the columns and, with much more caution, went towards the monsters. In the process, the boy was certainly hit by the arrows, but thanks to his speed, nothing was too serious. Unfortunately, his body was covered in small cuts, his clothes were torn, but his light armor came in handy. Bell knew that in order to win, he first needed to defeat the larger goblin, and he would be the biggest problem. However, the boy didn't know how he would defeat him, especially since the monster was theoretically armed. Using all his speed, Bell began to take down the smaller monsters with precise and quick blows. His sword gleamed in the dim light of the cave, each movement meticulously calculated to ensure he would not be surrounded. As he advanced, his eyes fell upon the largest of the monsters, a muscular, misshapen goblin who was clearly the leader of the group. The monster growled, raising a large makeshift club and advancing on Bell with heavy strides. Bell's heart raced. He knew this fight would be different from the previous ones. The lead goblin, using his makeshift weapon, delivered a powerful blow that Bell barely avoided, sliding to the ground. The impact of the club against the stone echoed through the cave, creating an atmosphere of palpable tension. Bell scrambled to his feet, aware that his only advantage was his speed. He decided to exploit this advantage, quickly striking the monster's leg with his sword in an attempt to throw it off balance. The cut on the goblin's leg caused the monster to let out a roar of pain and fury, staggering for a moment. Bell took the opportunity to strike again, but the goblin, with amazing reflexes, swung his club at Bell, who barely had time to dodge. The club grazed him, almost hitting him. Bell realized that he was in a very dangerous situation. The monster was not only strong, but also more agile than it seemed. The other goblins, seeing their wounded leader, hesitated, watching the fight with a mixture of fear and caution. Bell knew that if he did not deal with the leader quickly, the others might regroup and attack together. He redoubled his efforts, using the darkness of the cave and the stone columns as cover to move quickly around the goblin. He delivered several quick blows, trying to wear down the monster. 
Each attack that landed on the goblin leader seemed to inflame its fury even more. The monster, now bleeding from multiple cuts, began swinging its club wildly, hitting walls and columns, hoping to crush the young adventurer. In a desperate move, the larger goblin began using its own injured arm as a whip, swinging it hard. Bell was hit several times, which made him recoil and almost lose his balance. The impact threw him against a column, and he felt sharp pain spread through his body. With difficulty, he got up, only to see the monster advancing on him with a demonic expression, drooling and screaming in fury. Bell felt a paralyzing fear. He remembered the monster stories his grandfather had told him, but none of them prepared him for the visceral terror he was feeling at that moment. The lead goblin, now completely out of control, grabbed Bell by the hair and lifted him up, opening its mouth to devour him. Bell smelled the creature's fetid breath and closed his eyes, preparing for the worst. Suddenly, a powerful wind filled the cave, forcing Bell to open his eyes. Everything around him began to crumble, the monster's arm holding Bell was severed, and the creature's body disintegrated in a burst of ash. When Bell stood up, still dazed, he saw Alfia, his aunt, standing with a stern expression. Around them, the cave was littered with debris and the remains of the monsters. Alfia had intervened at the last moment, saving him. She approached, her gaze a mix of disappointment and relief. I asked you to bring only one dropped item, but what you did was far beyond what was expected, she said, casting a healing spell on Bell. As Bell recovered, Alfia explained that her intervention was not to save Bell, but to test his limits. He had gone beyond expectations, but he still had a long way to go. Alfia told Bell to keep training, as he would have other chances to prove himself. As they walked back home, Bell looked back at the hole in the cave wall, impressed by his aunt's power and the resilience of the monsters he had faced. When they arrived home, Zeus was waiting at the door, worried and almost in tears when he saw Bell's condition. Alfia, confident, explained what had happened, but Zeus, in a fit of anger and concern, began to scream, blaming her for putting his grandson in danger. Alfia, irritated, cast a spell that destroyed part of the front of the house. Zeus immediately began to apologize, while Zard, who had been watching the scene from inside the house, sighed and went to get his tools to repair the damage. Bell, still in shock over what had happened, felt a mixture of frustration and determination. He knew he had a lot to learn and that his path to becoming a hero would be arduous. Even so, he felt a deep love and respect for his family, who, despite all the challenges, were always by his side, willing to help him grow and become stronger.